Thank you, Grover. In our next story, we focus on technology and how it's now incorporated into education starting in kindergarten and first grade. Focus reporter Brittany Garzillo joins us now to explain how one new school in Allentown makes it happen. Brittany. Laura, CAI Learning Academy in Allentown offers technology-infused instruction in elementary school. Since September of 2014, the schools put Apple iPads in the hands of each and every student. Take a look. Inside these kindergarten and first grade classrooms, school subjects like reading, writing, and arithmetic involve the Apple iPad what's to them a toy, but we all see it as an instructional tool for them. Which one that has more and it is a A tool used to infuse technology into the classroom. An idea at the core of CAI Learning Academy in Allentown. The goal is to, in, in a very small way, kind of re-engineer education. Um, specifically here in the Lehigh Valley. Here, every kid has their own iPad, a rarity for an inner city school. We wanted to try something different, um, be a little bit innovative, and focus on the specific needs of our students. Jessica Devlin has served as the school's director of education since it opened in September of 2014. You're going to see technology kind of seamlessly infused into what we're doing from the iPads to the TVs. The private school was founded by Tony Salvaggio, the president and CEO of Computer Aid Inc. in Allentown and currently serves kindergarten and first grade students. While the tuition is $4,000 a year, Devlin says a majority of the school's 53 students enrolled receive scholarships. I don't know that, you know, in many situations in Allentown that you might be able to walk into a whole day kindergarten that has 15 students. S-A-I-D, say, say, say. On this day, head teacher Jill Rothenberger utilizes the classroom's 60-inch TV to teach a lesson to her kindergarten class made up of no more than 15 students. Every grade level has a 60-inch television, and oftentimes you may walk into either a kindergarten or first grade classroom, you might see a teacher using that TV as a teaching or instructional tool to maybe introduce a lesson. Good. These full-day kindergartners continue their reading lesson independently on their iPads using a web-based reading program called Imagination Station. Some of them are working on comprehension work, some of them are working on fluency, some of them are working on sight words, some of them are working on phonics skills. It depends on where they are in the program. During the activity, Rothenberger monitors student progress on her laptop. I'm able to see what they are being asked, how long it is taking them to answer the questions. Um, and again, especially those students who might be struggling, this is a great tool for me to use to then pull them into small group and provide intervention. Our focus is to provide students with a holistic education, very much rooted in the belief that our students can be learning independently and advancing their reading and math skills. So they're reading and performing math to grade levels above their current grade level. We very much strive to provide our students with a lot of enrichment opportunities to help get them there. Oh, show me how you line up like leaders. With iPads in hand, the class heads downstairs for hands-on learning. One of the things that we really recognize is that all of our students learn in very different capacities, whether it's a teacher standing in front of the classroom directly speaking to them, uh, or it's reading something on a piece of paper, or it's the iPads. Each of them is engaged in a different way. Here, students use an app called Imagination Playground to design a structure before assembling it in real life with oversized building blocks. We're trying to get the ball in a hole that can keep it in there. Has it happened yet? Not yet. Our vision down the line is to see our students you know, designing a structure, creating it, and even using their iPad, creating instructions for other students to take and build off of what they've already designed. Try to get that ball and go all the way. Back upstairs. Five double. Ten. Students in this first grade classroom work on math skills. Exactly. When you subtract, you have the big number in front. Both independently and in group instruction. See if you can find the related fact. They're learning about technology. They're learning how to use it properly. 
um, but they're also able to work independently, but they're also able to work with, with their classmates. According to Devlin, the school recently submitted an application to add a second grade and hopes to continue adding grade levels in the future. But for now... My hope is that we're setting our, our students up for a really successful future and teaching them what it means to dream big and work hard. By putting technology in every student's hands. For Focus, I'm Brittany Garzillo, reporting. Thank you, Brittany. When I first saw this story, it did remind me a bit of the Newton School, which you covered shortly after it opened in fall of 2014. That's right. The Newton School opened at the same time as CAI Learning Academy, but it's a STEM-focused preschool developed by Community Services for Children. Here's a Focus flashback to the Newton School. We're going to try to make these now three-dimensional. At the Newton School in East Allentown, there's something different in the way these children build towers, stack blocks, and paint shapes. What really makes it different is instead of taking a language and literacy-based approach to learning, the Newton School takes a STEM approach to learning. Do you think you could build your bloop from your blueprint? And it's a flat and it's two-dimensional. Can you make it a structure now? Here, four-year-old Nelson takes his artwork, or blueprint, from the design station to the designated engineering area, where he uses foam blocks to build a structure. You just made your blueprint into a structure. Named after the achievements of Sir Isaac Newton, the Newton School uses STEM topics, science, technology, engineering, and math as its focus for hands-on pre-K learning. Studies show us that in specifically in those areas that we are going to have a workforce shortfall and that we need to begin now to start to help children want to choose careers in science, technology, engineering, and math for their success. It's project-based and it's hands-on and everything interrelates. Good morning. Rhonda Lynch, the school's lead teacher, has more than 25 years of teaching experience and helps oversee all 20 of the four-year-old students. On this day, she and her co-workers start off with a song. My heart says thanks. Um, 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 um. My heart says thanks. And snack before breaking into three small groups, science, design, and engineering. Oh, what happened? We're doing flimsy sturdy. Why will it fall? Why will it break? In the design area, learning what a blueprint is and how to create a design. And everything is hands-on so they really can comprehend and understand and play and experiment. Located on the Donnelly Children's Campus in Allentown, the Newton School's pilot class was launched by Community Services for Children, a local nonprofit that provides free early childhood education to low income families across the region. In addition to the Newton School, CSC provides various programs like Head Start, Early Head Start, Pre K Counts, the Keystone Stars, and subsidies for child care. The teachers aren't teaching from a thousand foot level and trying to spoon feed them information. Instead, those teachers are at the three foot level and they're sitting at the tables with them. They're engaged with them. They're learning together. They're walking through the methods and the processes together as joint learners um, and discovering along the way. For four and a half hours a day, 180 days a year, these toddlers explore all areas of the classroom those designated as science, technology, engineering, and math, along with areas such as library and art, which incorporate STEM concepts. They're pulling in language and literacy. They're pulling in art. They're pulling in social studies. But it's through the use of the engineering process, the scientific method, and the integration of technology across the board. With a grant from PPL, Community Services for Children has also launched a STEM training series for pre-K teachers in hopes of developing more STEM-related preschools around the region. That would be our hope. Um, that more and more preschools and more and more daycare um, centers would involve children in the STEM process so that their excitement will build and, and we can uh, move forward with creating more scientists and engineers. While some of the students are still working on pronouncing words like science and engineering. Can you say engineering? Engineering. 
Those at the Newton School feel it's important to provide the building blocks for STEM concepts in early childhood, something that they say is one of a kind in the Lehigh Valley. Research has shown that children really should be engaged at this age to build that excitement, that when you start to engage children in a middle school or a high school level, they're already disengaged from the subject matter. We want a strong Lehigh Valley, and having a strong Lehigh Valley means having a strong workforce, and it starts at the age of four. An innovative Lehigh Valley preschool that's building the foundation Whoa. for future success. For Focus, I'm Brittany Garzillo reporting. Thank you, Brittany. Our Focus Full Steam Ahead series.